All right, this video is going to be um, kind of a uh, the steps involved in graphing general rational functions, and then I'm going to do a couple examples also. Um, the steps involved, and I would you know maybe pause the vis video and jot these down after listening to the explanation. But when you have a rational function, which again is just a fraction, so p of x divided by q of x, and p of x would be some polynomial with degree m q of x is going to be some polynomial with degree n. I'm going to refer to m and n later, so that's why I'm pointing that out. So what you need, to, really the steps that I think are very helpful, since you can't use your calculator to graph these, the first thing I would do is solve p of x, which note is your numerator, to find the x-intercepts. Okay, so just again kind of correlating that. So solving the numerator is going to give you x-intercepts. Okay, second step is solve q of x, which is your denominator to find the vertical asymptotes. So again, by solving the denominator, you're finding vertical asymptotes. So you're going to have x-intercepts, which are obviously points on the x-axis. You're going to have vertical asymptotes, which you know your graph pieces will never go cross through. And then third, and last but not least, you have also um, an end behavior. And you're going to have, at most, one end behavior asymptote. Sometimes you don't have one at all. So it matters, it's determined by the degrees. So here's this m and n again. So remember, m is the degree of the numerator, n is the degree of the denominator. So if the degree on top is less than the degree on the bottom, then y equals 0 is your m behavior asymptote. So in other words, the x-axis would be y equals 0. If the degrees are the same, then you divide the leading coefficients, and then y equals that would be your end behavior asymptote. So y equals, you know, like, let's say it's 3 over 2 or something like that. And lastly, if your degree on top is larger than the degree on bottom, then you actually have to do synthetic or long division to find the end behavior. I'll be honest with you, for this section, we're going to just focus on synthetic so you don't have to go back and do any long division, um, probably until you, you know, go back into pre-calculus. So I'm going to use these um, three steps in the next two graphs that I do so you can kind of see how helpful they are. Okay, so the first graph is y equals 3 divided by x squared plus 2. So if I'm following the steps, the first thing that I'm going to do is find the x-intercepts. Okay, so to find the x-intercepts, I solve the numerator. Well, if I take the numerator and I set it equal to 0, obviously there's no x to solve for, so there are no x-intercepts and that's bound to happen. Okay, so that doesn't help me out. Second step then is to solve for any vertical asymptotes. So then you're going to solve the denominator. So basically you solve the numerator and the denominator, but you have to know which, which piece is finding you, you know, which parts of the graph. So if I solve this, um, it's going to equal a negative 2, and when I square it a negative, it's going to be imaginary. And I can't have imaginary asymptotes, so I have no vertical asymptotes. Okay, last step then is to recognize the degrees of my polynomial functions. Well, the degree on top is clearly 0, and that is less than the degree on the bottom, and that automatically means y equals 0 is my end behavior asymptote, which happens to be horizontal. So I can kind of draw that, actually I'll use a different color since black on black is not really going to show well. So I can draw in my horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, and that's all I have. So that doesn't help me out, but let me give you a rule of thumb. Um, if you have the number of vertical asymptotes you have, will it, whatever that is, um, plus, one, um, plus 1, will be the number of pieces of graph that you have. So if I have no vertical asymptotes, if I add 1, that's obviously 1. That means I'm going to have one nice continuous piece of graph. If I had one vertical asymptote, that means I'm going to have two pieces of graph. Okay, kind of like the branches you were drawing earlier. So I'm going to have one nice continuous piece of graph. So really, um, I can just probably test like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Just keep it as easy on myself as I possibly can. So I'm going to do that. Negative 1, negative 2, 0, 1, and 2. So if I put negative 2, and I will just talk through this verbally, um, two squ negative 2 squared is 2, plus 2 is, uh, I'm sorry, 2 squared is 4, plus 2 is 6. So 3 over 6 is going to be a half. 
So that's going to be a half. And I'm just going to go over to 2 also because note, negative 2 squared and positive 2 squared are both going to be 4. So they're going to be the same answer. Um, same with negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Plus 2 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And positive 1 is going to be the same. And 0 is easy if I put 0 in for x. Oh, I shouldn't really cross that out. But if I put 0 in for x, it's going to be 3 halves, or 1 and a half. So I'm going to plot these points here. Um, so I'm going to go over to negative 2 uh, goes up to a half, and positive 2 also goes up to a half. Um, I'm going to have to blow up my graph a little bit, so hopefully you jot down those points. But I, all right, so negative 2 goes up to a half, and positive 2 goes up to a half. Negative 1 and 1 go up to 1, and 0 goes up to 1 and a half. So if I bring that down a little bit, really, if you think about it, um, going back up here, if, if I put in really large values for x, that's going to create a large denominator, and dividing by a large number creates a very small situation. So obviously, no matter how big I get in the positive or negative direction, it's going to get closer and closer to zero, which is my asymptote. So that's plenty of points to see that this graph, um, sorry, that was really bad that this graph is going to ride along that asymptote. So if I just kind of draw that in, and it's just kind of riding along the asymptote, and that is what that graph will look like. So again, no vertical asymptotes means I'm going to have one nice continuous piece of graph. OK, the last one I'm going to look at, um, again, I'm going to walk through these steps. So the first step would be um, solving the numerator for x-intercepts. So x squared minus 9 equals 0, x squared equals 9. So plus or minus 3 are going to be intercepts. So 3, 0, and negative 3, 0 are going to be x-intercepts. Solve the denominator for vertical asymptotes. So again, add 4. And you can certainly factor these if you're questioning that. Absolutely, you can. So x equals 2 and x equals negative 2 are going to be my vertical asymptotes. These are x-intercepts, right? And third step before I test points is to look at the degrees. Well, the degrees are the same, which means I'm going to divide out the leading coefficients, which are both 1s, clearly. So y equals 1 is the end behavior asymptote, again, because the degrees x squared, x squared um, are the same. So if I go over to my graph, I know that I have vertical asymptotes at um, negative 2 and positive 2, and my m behavior asymptote was y equals 1, and I have x-intercepts at 3 and negative 3. So I'm going to draw in all the pieces of information that I got. Now, I have two vertical asymptotes, which means I'm going to have three pieces of graph. So I know one piece is going to be here, one piece is going to be here, and then probably something in between, and it usually is the number of vertical asymptotes, you're going to have a piece of graph on each side and in between is how it's going to work. So to me, um, testing 0 and maybe negative 1 and 1 would give me my middle piece of graph and then maybe one other point like, um, well, actually I don't need to test any more points, so I'll talk about that in a second. So I'm going to just test, um, what did I say, negative 1, 0 and 1, and then we'll see if we need more points after that. So if I put negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 9, um, and then on the bottom it's going to be 1 minus 4, so that's going to be negative 8 over negative 3, so 8 thirds. And if I square a positive 1, I'm actually going to get the same thing. Um, and if I put 0 in, that's easy, that's just going to be negative 9 over negative 4, so 9 fourths. So if I approximate these, um, negative 1, 8 thirds, of course, is 2 and 2 thirds. So if I go to negative 1 and then go up 2 and 2 thirds, and go over positive 1, up 2 and 2 thirds, and then 9 fourths is 2.25, so 0 and then 2.25, which is a little bit less than that. And now take a look at that, and that 0, 2.25 is obviously um, kind of the minimum of that. So I can see that that's really like a parabola shape there happening in the middle, and you can never go past vertical asymptotes. So it's got to ride along those vertical asymptotes at that point. 
Now, one of two things is going to happen in the middle of vertical asymptotes. It's either going to make a parabolic shape or it's going to make like a cubic shape. And you can cross through horizontal asymptotes, so I want you to be aware of that. But you can't cross through verticals ever because that makes the function undefined, of course. Um, then last but not least, I've got my x-intercepts there. And I know that those pieces are going to, um, I can't cross my vertical asymptotes. So they're just going to be like hyperbola branches. Ooh, I totally missed that point, though. Not my intention. So kind of following those asymptotes. And there is your graph. So really, I didn't need to test any more points because I knew it was going to ride along both of those asymptotes. And that is an example where you have the same degree or two vertical asymptotes.